Alright, welcome back to part 2 for modeling a spaceship. If you still haven't watched part 1, you can check it out now. Starting off, the principal BSDF shader is going to be our main hub for all the textures we're putting in. So I'm going to add in this picture of steel plating and I'm going to use this kind of like a, uh, a roughness map. I'm going to plug it in just for now to here so we can see what it's looking like. And I'm going to select everything and cube project to make it less stretched. With the Node Wrangler add-on, I can select this texture and press Control T to bring up this mapping node. I can then make these tiles a bit smaller and I'm gonna plug this into the metallic and into the roughness just to give it kind of a uneven uh, reflectivity to it. Um, yeah, and that's looking pretty good. I am then going to add in this picture of some rusty metal and this is going to be our specular map because it looks really good honestly to have different textures be the different roughness and specular. I'm going to use this picture of a train as the uh, main paint texture because it works really well using a picture of a real vehicle to kind of guide where your uh, textures go. Um, and this looks kind of cool but we're going to unwrap it and right off the bat if you unwrap this texture and try and move it around you'll find that moving these bits will move every single texture that we've already put on here so all the other UVs are getting messed up. Now we can fix this very easily by going to the object data properties uh, tab and opening the UV uh, area and adding in a new UV map and we'll just call it paint texture or something. I'm going to add in a UV map node which will allow us to select the UV we want to control the paint texture which will then allow us to move that separately without interrupting the roughness and specular maps. Now we're going to switch this here to the paint texture or whatever you want to name it and now when we come over here as long as we have the paint texture selected within the um, object data properties we'll be able to move around these and it will not affect the specular. Now I'm just going to breeze through this real fast in uh, sped up because this takes quite a while to get like all the uh, UVs where you want them to be. So just have fun with it and um, yeah just go to town like as much detail as you want to put in is great and especially when you're using something that already has a fair amount of detail like the picture of the train it makes it very easy to get some like cool extra details without having to actually model it. So I highly advise using this method if you want to go kind of like a quick and dirty route because otherwise then you have to like take this whole thing unwrapped and put it in like a I don't know image editor or whatever or like a art editor and then you can like draw the all the maps you want or paint them in but I like this way better because you just get a lot of interesting things you never thought you would get otherwise. All right after that one minute segment of me rambling on there for no apparent reason um i'm going to select all these uh all these faces along the windshield and my thought for here is that this is like the kind of glass where you can see out of it easy enough but trying to look in it just almost is like a one-way mirror one-way glass one way one-way glass yeah all right i'm gonna make a new texture here and this is gonna be our glass shader I'm going to delete this uh, principled here and I'm going to add in a mixed shader, a glossy shader, and a transparent shader. Now uh, the mixed shader is getting plugged in here and then the other two are going to get plugged into the mixed shader. And this is a really good way to make some like glass that uh, doesn't, doesn't freak out as much as using the glass node. Um, also you have more control over how reflective it is and how much you want to be able to see through which is really nice. Um, so I advise just tweaking these settings until you get to something that looks kind of nice. Alright going back into this I'm going to add in that same dirty metal texture from before and that's going to kind of control how smudged the glass is. I really wanted to cube project this but I was finding that it wasn't working and then I remembered that I'm on a different UV map. So if you're ever having trouble projecting and it just doesn't look right remember that you're using two different UV maps here and you might have to switch back and forth. Anyways you can plug this into the roughness and change the color of the glossy and just tweak it however you want really until you think it looks nice. I kind of wanted to go for this almost uh, dark gold type of reflection. 
At this point, I'm thinking that the spaceship looks too smooth, so I'm going to plug one of my metal textures into the normal map, and I'm going to add in a bump map. With the bump map, I'm going to plug the uh, texture here into the height of it, and that's very bumpy, so I'm going to press invert here and pull down the strength until it's more of a subtle. We just don't want anything to look too smooth and pristine. Now at this point also we kind of want our paint texture to reflect what the bump is doing so I'm going to add in a mix RGB and I'm just going to plug the paint texture down into that too so we just have a little of both of these textures. At this point also I want to add in those like jets and engines so I'm going to start first by adding just a little bit more detail to um, the grounds thruster engines down here. And that will just mean changing the UV back to the paint texture and then just slide in, slide in these around so I think it looks nice. I'm also going to extrude these up a little bit just to give a little extra geometry. And it looks pretty good. So I'm going to add in a new emissive texture. And this will be our blasting jet texture. And I'm going to just assign that to all these spaces down here. And I'm going to assign that to the jet engines here and just put it <laughs> wherever on the ship where you think it looks natural basically and uh, once you're all done with that we can uh, you know tweak the color a little bit tweak the strength I pulled it up to about a 10 and changed the color yeah so just do what you think looks nice at this point I'm gonna add in some lights and other extra geometry so again it's just more extruding and insetting and double double tapping I to inset all the faces separately really works well for stuff like this when you're trying to add in like a lot of little lights in a row as you'll see in a sec right here um, yeah so just go nuts Kind of throughout this process, I was thinking that this is kind of like a giant, almost like an Airbus, which I know is a type of plane, but kind of similar principle where it's like almost like a giant car, you know, like a cargo ship, but um, our cargo vessel, but it also has kind of the um, same style that a plane might have. So the little um, light accents on the wings just so that um, it's visible from the air where how far the wingspan spreads so just go think about the little things when you're doing stuff like this like uh, where would the safety lights be on our reverse lights or the front lights and like how would they play into the major structure and if you understand a word I just said, then like uh, props to you because I don't know what I just said, basically. All right, going on, I think the bottom of the wings look really boring, so I'm going to give them a different UV wrapping than the top, and I'm just going to give them more of a uh, like a subtle uh, structure. And basically, because I'm doing all this in real time, like I didn't make the spaceship before, and this is just me making it for the first time, I went and gave them all the same color, and then I decided... I didn't like that so I went back and added in more texture to them and it's really great having something like this train that has windows and doors and stuff because you just have so many places where the colors just shift and you have a perfect line with the color shifting and it can add um, a lot of extra detail for stuff like this when you're trying to give like extra texture and kind of inform like okay the paint changes here this is metal this isn't yeah so again using a texture like this is a really great way to get that very easily and also adding in little accents along the wings and stuff is another great way to go again at this point in the process it's basically all up to you on what you want to um, extrude or inset or uh, texture I just like to you go through and add in little details and stuff or little rings of texture to make stuff different and it's totally up to you again but it, it just adds a little bit in the grand scheme of things I decided up on the front to make kind of a uh, grill almost like on a car and um, I think that looks kind of cool, maybe a little dorky, but that's fine. I also decided to put some insets on here um, on the sides just to kind of add a little extra geometry or something. Like you could even add a little engine parts showing there or something. I just didn't do it. And I decided to add in some lights on the top and the, rotate them a little bit uh, so that they kind of shine out instead of straight up. So I think that looks pretty cool too. 
And at this point, like, there's not that much modeling left to do, so it's basically just me selecting some of the random geometry shapes that came about from using the bevels and using that to make all new shapes and uh, color schemes here. So that's a really great way to add some extra geometry and extra, you know, fancy texturing as well. Now this is a cool trick. If you put in a uh, hue uh, saturation node, you can change the color and that's really fun to do if you're not completely sold on the original color. So I strongly advise doing that if you ever want to change things up. You can also add in an object info node and plug the randomizer into the color. And this will uh, make it so every time you duplicate the ship, the ship comes out with a completely different color, which is really cool for making a uh, self-randomizing fleet or uh, a bunch of cars or something like that. I strongly advise. But for this, I'm just going to unplug it because it's easier to see. The ship's basically done now. Um, I just decided that I wanted to uh, move this UV around because I didn't like the straight gray on the sides, just to give it a little extra fake geometry. Um, but then, you know, that's an optional thing, and you can do that anywhere you want or all over the whole ship. Um, so it's really up to you. It, these kinds of things look best um, if it looks like there is a pattern that the vehicle is trying to follow because if you do everything too random then it just looks like a um, amorphous blob which I've run into where uh, just adding too much like greebles and little bits and textures if there's no pattern or organization to them will just end up looking bad so just want to make sure that everything kind of follows a style or a pattern just to make things flow together so you can really tell like Oh, what part of the ship is this? Am I looking at the front or back? So just something to keep in mind. All right, and now we have a finished spaceship. Um, I decided to change the engine color again because of course I did, but it's done now. That's the important part. And um, yeah, it was really fun to do and I hope you guys learned something. And uh, perhaps next time I could do some sort of animation tutorial on how to get the spaceship to move in like an organic way. Anyways, I will catch you around. Bye.